Hello children, welcome to the third lecture of chapter number 9th, the fundamental rights, duties and directive principles of state policy. In previous two lectures, we had seen about the human rights we had seen about the human rights we had also seen the fundamental rights in fundamental rights we had seen the six fundamental rights that there are six fundamental rights out of that we had seen right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, okay. So this were the three fundamental rights that we had seen in the previous two video lectures. Today we are going to see about the other rights so the first right that we are going to see today is right to freedom of religion see any citizen of india can follow any religion of his choice see he can follow any religion of his choice can promote and propagate propagate is spread the same is mentioned in the provisions of the constitution so as per the constitution of india any citizen of india can follow any religion of his choice and propagate the same but this right is to be enjoyed with permissible limits see there are certain conditions which are also connected to this right so that it does not affect the freedom of public administration okay so this right is to be followed with certain restrictions with certain limitations so that it doesn't damage or it doesn't affect the freedom of other people and the public administration morality and health of the society also is to be taken into consideration while following this right the religious gatherings offerings or prayers are not included in this see what is not included in it then the religious gatherings offerings and prayers are not included into this particular conditions the state of india does not have any religion this is very important statement the state of india uh, does not have a religion of its own means india is secular means it follows all the religion it supports all the religion it respects all the religion the indian state is not run as per the principles of any religion or sect see the government does not run on the religions of any religion or sect it follows the policy which is good for all the religion the state cannot interfere in the religious matter or religious belief of any group. See, it cannot interfere into the religious matter or religious belief of any group. It is independent to follow it. The religious groups have been given the freedom to establish any religious organization and can manage and administrate them for religious and philanthropic aims philanthropic means donations philanthropic means donation aims okay so they, any religion can or uh, <coughs> maintain or establish a organization which is for the spreading of the religion for propagating the religion for supporting the religion and also for creating the donation getting the donation for the religion the state cannot use the fund collected through public taxes or public funds for the benefit and development of any specific religion or sect this is important the taxes which are paid by the people of that particular state or the country 
cannot be used for development of a specific religion or sect okay it has to be used for the development of all the religion and all the people living in that country the educational institutions running in on government granite grant cannot impart religious education or compel the student to participate in any religious education or attain any religious mist okay any government schools okay those schools or those institutions which are taking government grants cannot impart a education related to religion or they cannot force the student to participate into any of the religious meets they are not allowed to do so the next right is cultural and educational right the next okay is cultural and educational right people of various religion various languages and cultures live in india now we know that india is a multicultural multilingual country means various people from various religion languages and culture live into india the people of india have a right to preserve their language see they have a right given by the constitution to preserve their language script cultural identity and ethnicity okay they can follow they can speak their own language they can write into their own language and they can maintain the cultural identity identity and the ethnicity of their own culture any educational institute which relies on government grant cannot deny admissions on the grounds of religion caste creed language or any say any government school or colleges cannot deny deny is to stop or do not allow the admissions on the basis of religion caste creed language or any other reason they cannot say no to anyone for admission everyone is allowed to take an admission into the government aided schools or colleges if any individual appeals to vote on the ground of religion caste or language then it is considered as a malpractice say if anyone or any person appeals to vote on the basis of caste color creed or any other thing then it is considered a malpractice as per act 123 of third uh, any of the state can frame a law and provide the right to the citizens to form and manage any institution based on cultural and linguistic minority see okay the state allow the different religions to make institutions of their own to support their own religion and linguistic culture and also their own uh, ideas the state shall not discriminate in giving educational grant or educational scholarship for the state fund to any of the linguistic or religious minority see the government will give grants that are given as per the rules and regulations to each and every uh, institute that is uh, run by the minority without any discrimination if the state deserves to take over or confiscate the property of the minority institution then it can do so only after giving proper return say sometime it happens that the state has to take certain property due to the development purpose or any other purpose then it has to return it has to pay that particular uh, institution as per the rules and regulations laid by the government in this way important provisions in context to educational institution have been made into the constitution so this way you can say that there are different uh, rights of the cultural and educational rights mentioned into our constitution the next the next right that we are going to see is right to constitutional remedies now suppose that out of that five rights which are given some of the rights are not allowed or you are denied of the right then what to do then you can take uh, 
help of the six right that is the right to constitutional remedies no matter how many laws are framed or how many provisions are made for fundamental right if these are not implemented well then there remains no meaning of such freedom see even if there are lot of rights lot of freedom for us but if they are not given properly to us then it is useless therefore a provision has been made in the constitution for implementation of this right and under it a writ in the supreme court can be made for the violation of the fundamental rights see now, as i told you out of that five rights if any of the right is denied then you can directly file a writ into supreme court writ is a type of a case this right has been accepted as the right to constitutional remedies the supreme court plays an important role in protection of fundamental rights say supreme court is the guardian of the fundamental rights so if you are denied any of the right you can you have a right to go into supreme court and for this if the court finds it necessary then it can give orders instructions and decree decrees government order for following of that right the apex court is vested with the power vested is given with the power by the constitution nobody can oppose it if any person puts a complaint against any state for violation of fundamental right then supreme court can exercise it right okay if any person says that he is discriminated he is not allowed any of this fundamental right then supreme court can take take action into it and provide possible solutions for that particular thing dr baba saheb ambedkar has considered this right as soul of constitution remember this dr baba saheb ambedkar has considered this right as soul of constitution can be asked which right is considered soul of constitution then the answer would be right to constitutional remedies the parliament can hand over powers of giving such an order to any of the court if the state legislative assembly frames any law which violates the fundamental right or not in congruation of it then the supreme court can stop the state okay now if any state assembly takes such kind of law or frames such kind of law which denies certain right to any person then supreme court can ask the state assembly to look into that particular law again thus this right provides an opportunity to any of the citizen to approach court for the violation of fundamental right so as per this this can be a definition what is fundamental uh, const right to constitution remedy then this is the right provides an opportunity for any citizen of to approach the court for violation of fundamental right you can go into a court if any of the fundamental right is not provided to you okay the constitution provides the fundamental rights to the indian citizen okay the constitution provides the fundamental rights to indian citizen this rights are given against the government that is central and the state the fundamental rights are applicable to all the citizens of all the time so it is applicable to all the citizen no discrimination can be made for the following of the fundamental rights but it can be suspended this is very important let me mark it with other color this is very important but it can be suspended during the time of emergency say during the time of emergency your fundamental rights can be suspended any state cannot form any law which takes away fundamental right of the citizen but no state is allowed to form or frame any law which can take away the fundamental right of that citizen but at the same time during emergency okay this fundamental rights can be taken from you okay so we'll keep till here into this particular video lecture